Hey, Shannon. Hi, Lydia. How are you? Hold on I'm... just a second. Okay, what are you doing over there? Well, I've been trying to get my headband just right. Isn't this so cute? I love it. Oh, what headband? Well, if you've registered, you were lucky enough to receive our welcome gift, which included this adorable headband. And I don't know about you, but I use these headbands for everything from, you know, keeping my hair out of my face on a windy day, from, um, you know, working out, doing my morning yoga. You can wear them for anything. They're great. That is so true. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. I'm Lydia, the Director of Marketing and Business Development here at Prairie Lakes, and we've got Shannon, our new marketing specialist, and also Andy, our creative marketing guru here from Team Marketing to make sure everything runs smoothly as the night goes on. That's right. So Ladies Night Out is our annual event hosted by Prairie Lakes Healthcare System to provide women's health education in our service area. We care about each and every one of you, and we're so excited to continue to serve as a resource for women in our community to provide helpful information from our highly skilled specialists and providers so you have the tools and resources to make a healthy decision making in your life and to live a healthy life. Now, this event's usually held in person at the Watertown Event Center, but I promise you we're going to have such a fun night. And we're so excited to have you guys. You definitely do not want to miss what we have in store for you. Absolutely. I can't wait to have this event in person again as well. Hopefully next year, we'll keep our fingers crossed. But again, uh, in the meantime, we've got some great information ready for all of you ladies. Yes, I know. Again, maybe next year we'll be in person. Fingers crossed. Shannon, exactly. can you share, us, um, share with us a little bit more about the educational webpage? Sure. I'm going to share my screen quickly. Oops, I'm not going to be able to do that. But um, for all of you that have registered early, you will have gotten a um, you'll have gotten your link in that same email. You can now access uh, the website prairielakes.com slash ladies night out. And there you're going to find all, all types of tips and tricks and articles from our providers. Um, some information that Zanya is going to share with us will be accessible to you as well. Um, so again, just know that as our gift to you for registering with us and spending this evening with us, um, you'll have access to all that great exclusive information exclusively only for people that registered with us. Yes, um, and if you guys um, have been to Ladies Night before, you will also know that uh, we have some amazing giveaways and prizes for you guys. Um, the winners will be randomly selected from our list of those of you who registered and also um, who participate in the interactive chat log we have going on during the event. I know some of you have already started chatting, so thank you. Um, this year, we are super happy to have two uh, one-hour massage certificates, three mm -hmm. of Zanya's incredible cookbooks packed with delicious recipes, um, an adorable designer backpack, super cute, um, mm -hmm. a cozy blanket, and a handy camp chair for all of your outdoor activities. Um, we will announce those winners at the conclusion of tonight's event. That's right. And you guys, I, like Lydia just mentioned, I'm loving seeing this chat already blowing up. Everyone's excited. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things that we're going to be using throughout the night. Now, Zanya, we're going to introduce her in a minute. And you guys, she is full of energy. You're going to love her, but she's going to be doing a lot of interactive things. So down below, you'll see both uh, you'll see a Q&A section. So that's if she's, if you have questions throughout the presentation that you'd like her to answer at the end, you're going to go ahead and put those in the Q&A section. If you're just wanting to chat like you're doing now, or if, um, if she's going to be asking some quiz questions and you want to answer those in the chat, you do that in the chat button. So again, there's the Q&A that is for questions at the end of the night or the chat that's just an interactive way to communicate with us throughout the evening. Yes, very good. So Without further ado, it is my pleasure 
to tell you about celebrity nutritionist, Zanya Foco, here to share with all of us how to get your healthy on. All right. So to remember her name, Zanya Foco, she tells people to think of lasagna Coco. <laughs> Good name for a nutritionist, don't you think? Zanya's joining us today from the tiny town of Amstead near Ann Arbor, Michigan. She is the host of Zanya's Health Bites, a weekly half hour show airing on public television stations nationwide for over a decade. She's the author of two cookbooks, Lickety Split Meals and Eat Real, which are truly the fastest way to healthy. Her flagship, life, flagship lifestyle programs Diet Free and Eat Real for Your Health are used by individuals, work sites, and community groups nationwide. But all of these things, Zanya is most proud of being a wife and a mom. She wanted me to let all of you know that even one of her family members struggles with eating right and exercise. Yes, Buster, their family dog, is five critical pounds overweight. But ever since he attended one of Zanya's programs, he is feeling so much better. <laughs> Please help me welcome Lasagna, uh, I mean, Zanya Foco. <laughs> yay, and thank you so much, Lydia. That was so much fun. And uh, yay you for joining in tonight. And I'm super excited about everything that I have to share with you. And you know, it's so funny. Um, get your healthy on, right? It's a simple thing. Eat right, exercise, mm, you know, get your healthy on. And I, what I want, really want to share tonight is I really want to make sure that we kind of really get it, that it's, there's knowing and there's doing, right? Those two things are really kind of tough sometimes. So I'm going to be sharing with you three of my daily rituals. Actually, there's about five, but three of my daily rituals that I think make all the difference in the world. I've been a nutritionist dietitian now for over 30 years. And it really like these things are foundational and they're part of my every single day. And when I share them with other people, they tell me it changes their life, like in big ways, like getting their diabetes, going from pre-diabetic to not diabetic, or bringing their A1C down or bringing their cholesterol down so that their doctor says, I don't even know if you're the same person anymore. <laughs> don't you love it when the doctor says that? I mean, I love to surprise doctors. I will tell you that these three daily rituals that I do every day are life-changing. In fact, I'll tell you this, that I got a new doctor and we were doing the Zoom thing and getting to know each other. And he did a full lipid profile for me and my cholesterol is really low and my HDL is really high. And I knew it would be because it's been my whole life. And, um, but he did something new because my mother just passed away with Alzheimer's disease and my dad has had a stroke and my mom uh, struggled with, with cancer as well. And, you know, so I've got cancer, I've got heart disease, Alzheimer's disease and my family. I'm like, uh, you know, he said, okay, we're going to, we're going to also measure your C reactive protein, CRP. So it's um, inflammation markers in your blood. I go, Oh, I've never had inflammation markers in my blood measured before. That'll be great. So sure enough, he measures that and we meet on zoom and he goes, huh, your inflammation markers. I go, yeah. He goes, tell me again, what do you eat? And I go, oh, let me tell you what my three rituals are. And I tell him what my three rituals are. And, and he goes, huh. He goes, because your inflammation markers are the lowest I've ever seen. <laughs> Woo -hoo, I was doing the happy dance. And not only does low cholesterol, high HDL, which I have very good. And not only does low inflammation, inflammation is the basis for disease for so many disease processes of which it, Alzheimer's disease is number one of the big ones. So I said, so doc, you're saying I'm doing all I can. He goes, you're doing all you can to reduce inflammation in the brain, inflammation in the body, in the heart, in the blood vessels keeping your cholesterol low, your HDL high, which is your good cholesterol. He goes, you're doing everything you can. And I go, well, I think it's my three rituals. He goes, oh yeah, I think it's your three rituals. 
So I'm super excited to share those with you tonight. And before I do, I do want to ask you a true false quiz question. And this is your opportunity to use that chat. All right, the chat. We're going to pull up a slide and you're going to tell, I want you to tell me what you think, true or false. Only 8% of people meet the recommendations for a healthy lifestyle. What do you think? True or false? True or false? What do you think? Wow, 8%. That's depressing. Please tell me it's not true. What do I see? I see some trues. Uh-huh. Well, I all see, true. I see all trues. <laughs> That's depressing. This is in the United States of America. What are you talking about? You're telling me only 8% of people making the recommendations for a healthy lifestyle. That's depressing. Oh, I see a couple falses because guess what? It's, it's not true. The answer is false. But what's the right answer? Is it higher? or is it lower? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is it's, give me the right answer, 3%. <laughs> oh no, you're telling me it's only, only 3% of people currently meet the recommendations for healthy lifestyle. Now, here's the question. What really matters is you. Do you meet the recommendations for a healthy lifestyle? Do you? So do you want to find out right now if you meet the recommendations? Because guess what? It's just four little simple yes, no quest. It's just four questions. So tell you what, let's go back to our slides and let's take that test together, shall we? What I want you to do is I want you to raise up your fist and I want you to raise a finger for every yes answer, okay? And our goal is to get four yeses if we can, but let's be honest. And so here we go, raise your fist, here we go. What's the first question? Rate yourself. Number one, are you a non-smoker? Yay, Scott and I can both say, Scott, my trusty AV man over here, and my husband, uh, it's yes, alrighty. And if you aren't a non-smoker, then keep working on it until you are. Never stop stopping, <laughs> trying to stop. All right, next, do you eat at least five servings of fruit and vegetables each day? And it has to be, you know, a fist size serving is a serving of fruits and vegetables. It's gonna be any combination. So do you, I hope you do, at least five. If not seven to 11 to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Okay. I got quite a few yeses some thumbs up. I like it. You guys are doing good. It's all you healthy ones that take come to these. And uh, number three, do you exercise at least 30 minutes most days of the week? I can say yes. Yes, I do. At least 30 minutes most days of the week. That means you can be a couch potato for 23 and a half hours of the day, <laughs> just 30 minutes. And um, the next one is, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Are you at a healthy weight? Hmm. Sometimes that's a tough one. Sometimes the fruit and vegetables is a tough one. Sometimes exercise is a tough one, but those are the four basic things. Only 3% of Americans can say yes to all four. Can you believe that? Only 3% of all Americans? What's the problem? And does it really matter? So what if we only get three? So what if we only get two? So what? Well, unhealthy lifestyle is related to a lot of things. You want to guess 50% of cancers, 60% of cancers. You know what? The answer is 70% of cancers are related to an unhealthy lifestyle. I think somebody might have said one quarter. Well, it's closer to three quarters. Uh, all cancers are related to an unhealthy lifestyle. What percent do you want to guess for heart disease? Type it in. Is it higher? Is it lower? What do you think? What percent for heart disease? And um, 90. Linda, that's a pretty close guess, but uh, the answer is 80. 80% 80 of heart disease is related to um, our healthy lifestyle, a healthy or unhealthy lifestyle. And Number, the last one, type two diabetes, what percent? Is it higher or is it lower? 85, that's a good guess. 90, somebody got the answer right there. It's 90, 90% of type two diabetes. Wow, wow, wow. So it's time to get our healthy on and work on those four things. So I'm gonna give you some ideas uh, for those four things uh, so that we can more easily say yes um, to that. And if I wanna lose a few pounds before summer rolls around, I promise you, I've got fantastic. My three rituals will help you out, uh, that's for sure. So the next thing I wanna do before I share my first ritual with you is I wanna I want to play a game called Name That Food. And uh, so it's gonna be Name That Food. So I want you all to say it with me. Name hey. that food. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. A 32-ounce bottle of what 
has 52 grams of sugar, which is the same amount of sugar as in five huh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Wow. That's a lot of sugar. Oh my goodness. What do you think it is? Mountain Dew, orange juice, um, soda. Um, oh, lots of, this is lots of guesses, pop, soda, energy drink, um, ketchup. <laughs> That's a good guess. Ah, let's see what else. Um, lots of great guesses, you guys. Um, and Gatorade. I see three of you at least have said Gatorade and guess what? Ding, ding, ding. You should win a prize. And by the way, uh, those of you that are being really active, there's going to be three winners. And uh, the winners, people who are really actively playing the, with us in the game in the chats, guess what? You're more apt to win. So uh, look for you getting a cookbook here real soon. But the Gatorade, you know, you think about it being healthier than soda. Remember, Coke, Pepsi, lemonade, all of those would be even higher. And it's like, wow. Um, but Gatorade adds up too. Um, sugar adds up in a lot of places, granola bars, a lot of things that we think that are healthy. So um, there you go. All right, next one. Are you ready for the next one? Say it with me. Name that food. Here we go. The cereal, what is marketed as high and good for you antioxidants and fiber, but contains more sugar than Fruit Loops? Hmm. 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 So it's a kind of cereal, not just a brand, but a kind. Raisin Bran, Cheerios, Raisin Bran, Special K. Special K actually isn't that high in sugar, but it's not that high in fiber either. Um, let's see, Corn Flakes. Um, that's a good Honey guess, nuts. but it's not. Honey Nut is close. Honey Nut is getting there in sugar content. These are all some really good guesses. And Raisin Bran, some of the natural crumbling sugars, but I am talking about total added sugars. Um, the answer is, are you ready? It's Smart Start Cereal. Smart Kellogg's Smart Start Cereal. Look at this. It's high in fiber. It is heart healthy. It has antioxidant vitamin C, E, and beta carotene. But it has more sugar than Fruit Loops. Wow. That's a lot. So we got to look, we got to not be duped by things. We got to be able to read those labels and know it's amazing how uh, things can be. So are you ready for my third one? My third one, here we go. Name that food, according to brain imaging, what is as addictive as cocaine? <laughs> yep, smart group. smart group, caffeine to go with the sugar, uh-huh. Nice. You are such a smart group. And you know what? It is so true. Study after study we have. When I was in college 30 years ago, and I will tell you, I would ask my professors, isn't sugar addictive? Isn't sugar addictive? No, we have no scientific studies to prove that sugar is addictive. But now, now, um, according to research, but also according to MRI imaging, where they can measure the brain and they can watch it light up and we consume sugar or consume cocaine. We can watch the pleasure centers of the brain light up and we can absolutely see that sugar is indeed addictive. And it is, it stimulates the pleasure centers and lights up. Um, so I always say, uh, thanks to MRI imaging and the Dr. Oz show, we now know that sugar is addictive. And these are, these are slides that we will make available to you on the education page, uh, where there'll be recipes that I'm going to be talking about tonight and also these studies. I would encourage you to click on these hot links and go and look at these studies because it's like, don't just take my word for it. I mean, this is not just internet hoopla. This is true stuff. And in the Princeton study, uh, the mice, um, just like humans, uh, the mice would eat the frosting first uh, uh, on the Oreo cookie. Um, just very interesting uh, what they're learning and seeing. And so what's the big deal? So what? Our kids are addicted to sugar. So what? We're addicted to sugar. Even when we think we're eating smart start cereal and we think we're eating healthy things, um, granola bars, and you know, kind of don't really realize how sugar is coming in all kinds of places. And guess what? It is a problem. Um, too much sugar is linked to weight gain, heart disease, type two diabetes, cancer, depression, dementia, fatty liver disease, acne, dental decay. A lot. So we do need to dial down on sugar. So 
let's go off camera here. And I'll just want to share with you my A number one thing, my A number one thing. And this is even before I get to my rituals. Well, this is one of my rituals. This is one of my bonus rituals for you. And that is, I really flex that. No, thank you. No, thank you. When there's dessert, there's pie, there's cookies. You walk in and there's, you know, it's just so easy. Oh, you walk up to somebody's desk and they have candy and it's so easy to go, oh, candy. And you just have some candy because it's there. Right. And you just, oh, you go through life and oh, some, oh yeah, sure. It's there. Oh, it's something sweet. Oh, it's somebody's birthday. Oh, I'd love to help you. I'm sure I have a little bit of cake. Oh, and you know, it's really looking at no, no, thank you. No, thank you. And remembering that fruit is dessert and letting fruit be your dessert and having a fruit bowl that speaks that hopefully every single one of you has a teeming fruit bowl in your house, whether you keep some of the fruit in the refrigerator but I like to leave a lot of it at room temperature. When I bite into an apple, I like it to be room temperature. I love to hit my oranges at room temperature. I like them that way. And I will tell you, they're a little bit sweeter that way for me. And so I have some out at room temperature and some in the refrigerator. And look, I've got my blueberries. I took them out of my refrigerator. I have them here in my cool little pair. Really, these are so cool, you guys. Um, these bags are the bomb. I'm in love with them. Thank you so much uh, for getting these. These are, I keep this in here. This is a paper towel. And I will tell you, it'll help keep everything from vegetables to fruit, there'll be a little condensation in the bag and this will help prevent the condensation and help keep it longer. So these blueberries are dessert. I want to share with you that I was working with a woman one time that was having terrible sweet cravings, just terrible sweet cravings. She said, Sonia, I'm doing everything right and I'm exercising. And the only thing I need help with is that every afternoon I get a sweet craving and I go down to the gift shop and I buy candy and I eat candy. And if I could just stop that habit, I just can't stop it. But if you can help me stop that habit, then I will, I, I, I'm sure that's really the only thing I'm doing wrong. And I go, oh, okay. I said, well, tell me, I said, how many pieces of fruit a day do you eat? And she goes, fruit? She goes, isn't that high in sugar? I said, well, your brain requires simple carbohydrate for its functioning. And if it doesn't get that simple carbohydrate, it sends you a fruit craving. And that's what you're having every afternoon is a fruit craving, um, but you're misinterpreting it. Okay. Misinterpreting it. And you're thinking it's candy. Tell you what, what you need to do is have three fruits. Okay. Let's do four. I want you to have four fruits a day. She goes four fruits a day. I go an apple and orange, a banana actually counts as two, but an apple, orange, you name it, you I want you to get some dried raisins in a, like a fruit thing, um, in a nut thing. I want you to try, I want you to have four servings of fruit a day. If you go for four, you'll have at least three. If you go for three, you'll only have two. So I want you to have lots of fruit. She'd be like, I think there's a lot of sugar. I go, trust me on this. Trust me. It's going to give you your pleasure centers. It's going to help prevent sweet cravings. And I really think you'll notice a difference. And so I, she goes, well, I guess I got to buy a lot. I go, you got to buy a lot. That's four fr fruits a day times for a whole week. That's 28 pieces of fruit. It's got to go in your cart just for you. And tell you what, times it all out for your husband and your kids. She's like, wow, that's a lot of fruit. I go, I know, buy it, do it, try it. Try it for a week, come back and tell me how it goes. So she tries it for a week, she comes back. I said, so how were your sweet cravings this week? She goes, oh, she goes, I didn't have a one. Hmm. Yeah. Preventative. Your brain, when it gets those simple carbohydrates, we can rewire the pleasure centers of the brain. So I want to encourage you to have a fruit bowl. Have it number one. Have lots of fruit in your life. And don't worry, it's not added sugar. It's the added sugar that's the problem in America. The refined added sugars, but not from natural sugars, the vitamin C, the fiber, the water. It's naturally not that syrupy sweet. It's actually not so syrupy sweet. It's got water. It's very, it's in a wonderful uh, package. So and it's cancer fighting, heart disease fighting, all of those things. So I want you to try it. All right. That was my first bonus tip. That's not even my first one that th of the three that I was going to share with you, but it's an important one. And when we practice saying no to cakes and candy and cookies and things like that. When we practice saying no, it's amazing how, what a difference it makes. And when we're using fruit for dessert and serving fruit for dessert, serving fruit for dessert, it can really make a wonderful difference. Alrighty, I wanna go back to my slides and I wanna just, um, I wanna try something else with you. I wanna do one more true false thing with you and then we're gonna dive into our three things. And I just wanna ask you really quick, what do you think? Put it in the chat. 
True or false, studies show that consuming a serving of nuts daily reduces your risk of death from heart disease by 29%. Do you think it's true? Yep, look at the check box. Yuppers, true, look at the trues. And you're so right. It's 100% true. And when you can trade nuts for chips, bing, 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 what a great deal. So you don't even feel deprived, right? Nuts are, I include, encourage a handful of nuts every single day uh, of your life. Um, I certainly do myself. And it's the good fats, the chromium, um, the minerals that are in it, uh, the magnesium that's in it, the fiber that's in it, the type of fat helps lower blood cholesterol levels. It's all really good. So nuts are excellent and all the nuts. There's no one nut better than the other. So nice variety. All right, are you ready for the next one? True or false? Tell me if you think this is true. Adding a single serving a day of a cruciferous vegetable uh, cuts the risk of cancer by more than half. Adding a single serving a day of cruciferous vegetable cuts the risk of cancer by more than half. When you're like cru 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 crucifer what? <laughs> it's cabbage family vegetables cabbage family, you know, broccoli's in the cabbage family and cauliflower is in the cabbage family and then dog cabbage. And I especially love red cabbage, um, but white cabbage too, but red cabbage and bro Brussels sprouts and kale and bok choy. That's just a few. There are more, but those are the main ones. And if you add just a single serving a day of cruciferous vegetable customers of cancer by more than half, is it true? Yes. It's true, 100% true. So, wow, pretty amazing. Okay, are you ready? We're on a roll. What's the next one? The next one is eating one mushroom a day decreases breast cancer risk by 46%. What do you think? Go ahead and tell me if you think it's true or if it's false. Look at that, true, true, true. And we are hearing the most amazing things about mushrooms. Mushrooms from fighting dementia to also fighting breast cancer and all types of cancer. I'm gonna tell you, um, mushrooms are great, but look at all those true, true, trues. Look at all that. And yeah, vitamin D is a source of vitamin D in mushrooms. Yep. But I'm going to tell you how they really work in a minute. Lots of trues, but I'm going to tell you the answer is false. Yep. Geraldine, you're right. Uh, the answer is false. It's not 46, you guys. You're being a little gullible here. The real answer is 64%. <laughs> 64 oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? 64%. Wow. Wow. One mushroom a day. In fact, check this out. That's not all that mushrooms can do. Mushrooms eating three quarters of a cup of mushrooms twice weekly reduces the risk of cognitive decline by 50%. And how does it work? You know how it works? It works. They contain ergothionine or ET, ET, ergothionine, a unique antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, which humans are unable to produce on our own. Wow, fungus, fungi, that's a really fun guy. We need to have mushrooms. I will tell you, I was making a spaghetti sauce and usually put lots of vegetables in my spaghetti sauce. And uh, my son was like, mom, would you please not put any vegetables in the spaghetti sauce this time? I said, okay. So I took mushrooms and I ground them up fine. So they're kind of like ground up like meat and I sauteed them up, put them in there. And so I didn't put any other vegetables in it. And we had dinner and he goes, mom, this is delicious. Thank you so much for not putting any vegetables in here. I said, you're welcome, honey. I only put fungus in it. <laughs> anyway, you can sneak mushrooms into anything. In fact, now I remember I used to go and buy mushrooms like only, I used to buy mushrooms only when a recipe called for them. And now guess what? I just buy, I buy two packages of these every week and we just add them to so many things. Now, I do want to tell you this, and it, and it can be white mushrooms, portobello mushrooms. It can be really fancy mushrooms. You can do whatever you'd like. If you like them to be fancy, they can be fancy, but the studies were done on white mushrooms. So these are pretty darn good and they're pretty inexpensive. And um, so you can buy them already sliced. You can, however you want to do it. You can buy them in a jar, marinated in a jar. You can do a variety of ways, but I will tell you that if you're going to start having mushrooms on a regular basis, I want you to have them cooked. All right. Cooked. Cooked is really important. So make sure you do that. Um, cooked. Um, you wouldn't want to have mushrooms every day raw. Raw occasionally is okay. Um, but there's a trace toxin that are in raw mushrooms that kind of 
sort of start to counteract all the good and you don't want any bad at all. So when you cook it, it denatures that little bit of a toxin. So it's only good, only ergothionine good coming your out, coming your way. You got that? Okay, mushrooms more often. And you don't have to have a recipe. While we have lots of recipes, uh, tonight I'm gonna make a roasted thing for you is really good. And it didn't call for mushrooms, so I just threw them in. You just throw mushrooms into anything. You don't have to have a recipe. Okay, you got that? All right, next up. So. These are all little mini things that I do uh, on a daily, weekly basis, but I haven't really gotten to my core three things because my core three things, I just want you to know that food is powerful stuff. It's powerful negative, like we saw with sugar, and it's powerful positive, like we saw about mushrooms, cruciferous vegetables, and nuts. Also beans, pinto beans, kidney beans, garbanzo beans also reduce our risk of heart disease by 19%. Oh my goodness, food is powerful stuff. So what can we do? What's the best diet? You know, it's so confusing these days, right? I mean, there's so many diets and it's a grain of truth. And in all of these are so much good, even in keto, you get people off sugar. They get people to say no and have berries instead. What a great thing. I mean, I'll tell you there's, but it's so hard to live keto and it's so hard to live vegan, no animal foods, no cheese ever, no meat ever, no fish, no eggs, no nothing. Oh my gosh, that's hard. Do we have to be all the way? Mediterranean offers a lot of really good. We have so many solid studies. Intuitive eating, so important to listen to when you're hungry and when you're not. How can we put it all together? How can we kind of put it all? What's one thing when people say, Zanya, what's one thing? Well, the one thing is to eat real food, right? Eat real food, unprocessed, healthy, real food. And we got to learn to cook real food. We got to learn to buy real food. We got to learn to center our world and not, and go through our cupboards and go, oh yeah, this processed stuff. I don't need that. This processed stuff. And what am I going to make instead? And, and learn some new cooking ways so that we don't rely on convenience processed foods and cook with real food. So what is real food? You know, it's, it's nothing good taken out, nothing bad added in because that's what happens to processed food. They take out the good and they add in the bad and it becomes shelf stable and it becomes high in sodium. But what we want is close to its natural state as possible. That's what you really want. And why eat real food? Well, it's gonna eliminate the bad stuff for you. And like MSG and sodium and sugar and artificial colors and all those things, when you eliminate processed foods and it skyrockets all the nutrients that we really, really need that we don't get enough of, but when we eat real food. So this one habit, this one thing uh, really, really summarizes it all up and it decreases our calories. You end up eating less calories. You fill up before you fill out. Um, real food slims you and slims you down. So I'm sure you've heard that. And, but it's, I want you to really think about it and real food. And I want to share with you some ways to enjoy real food today. So are we ready for my first ritual that I'm promising you? All three rituals have to do with real food. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they help us get what we're supposed to have. And, you know, we're supposed to have like, not just five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. We're supposed to have like nine to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, but most people don't get that. So my three rituals guarantee that you get over five somewhere between eight to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. They guarantee it. And here are my daily rituals. Are you ready? I need a drum roll, please. I need a drum roll, please. My first daily ritual is I have a 24 seven veggie tray. I live by this. My husband is trained by this. It's part of the family, the 24 seven veggie tray. And I'm so excited because Prairie Lakes helped you out with a nice, these are so cool. These are so cool. Um, and they wash easily and they store easily and they're flat and oh my gosh, they're really nice. But I will tell you that I need a little larger for my 24 seven veggie tray. Cause you know how we make a, we make a vegetable tray. Like what do we do? We make one on 4th of July and Thanksgiving and, and parties. And once again, I have my little paper towel in here. But I use this tray right here. I use this tray and it's a veggie tray. And the thing is, I pull this out whenever I go to make dinner, I'm always starving. You know how it is, you're always starving. And I pull this out, pull the lid off. And it's part of our weekend routine. We get groceries and then we get this out and we fill it up. And this helps us through the week. This helps us not just with snacking. Yes, hummus is the perfect snack with this. But even if you have to get some ranch dip out, I don't care, whatever it takes to get the veggies down. And, but I'll tell you, this also serves to help us make a salad, to help us make a stir fry, to help us make uh, roasted vegetables. 
this is like home base. This is home base and it helped. Otherwise it's just too much work. Got it on the weekend. This is the kind of prep that I do and it makes making anything really easy. So I'm gonna set this aside like so. And that is habit number one, a 24 seven veggie tray, a 24 seven veggie tray. It's here all the time, always and forever. And it helps be your home base. That was habit number one. All right, ritual number two. What is it? Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. It is the easy button salad. The easy button salad. We have one every day of our life. What's the easy button salad? My brother Cliff came over, made him lunch, had this big salad, and it was just so full of great stuff. And he goes, Oh my gosh, he goes, This salad is great. He goes, I wish I would make these, but they're just so much work to chop up all this. And this is just so much work. And I go, Cliff, I go, What do you mean? I go, didn't you, didn't you get the, didn't you buy the refrigerator that they have, it has the easy button on the front and all you do is you push the easy button and out pops a salad? He goes, no. <laughs> I go, oh, Cliff, you got to get the easy button salad. I go, the easy button salad, that's the way to go. I'm going to tell you, it's just so easy. And it just like makes itself. He goes, what are you talking about? Here's what I'm going to tell you about. First of all, you do buy, you're already pre-washed. Yes, pre-washed. I trust it says triple washed and I am not washing them again. And this is spring mix. I do buy organic and I suggest you buy organic whenever you can. Uh, don't worry if you can't buy organic all the time, but buy organic when you can. And as you take a look, oh my goodness. Um, we, uh, my paper towel again, paper towel, helping to keep this fresh and last longer. I also have part of my ritual is that we have lots of these bowls, six of them to be exact. And we use these bowls to make salads and uh, to make Buddha bowls, as I'll show you that too today. They are used often. They are not, I think they're pasta bowls, but we don't use them as pasta bowls. <laughs> and when the greens are already, I don't know about you, but I haven't worked very hard so far. Have you worked very hard? It's been pretty simple, pretty easy. And the next thing is that part of that 24 seven veggie tray prep on the weekend is we also chop up a little bit of red cabbage because red cabbage is the most amazing superfood. Let me tell you, it's just amazing. So um, I like to add a little red cabbage to this. And I might, also have some shredded carrots that you can buy them shredded if you want or shred them yourself. Or I would just quickly run my knife through a couple of these carrots, just run my knife through a couple of these, because remember this is, this makes, makes veggie salad making easy. I can chop up a broccoli to put on there. Um, if I didn't have the cabbage, cause I want at least one cruciferous vegetable, right? So at least the cabbage or the broccoli or the cauliflower you can put on there. And then the other thing that I love to do is canned beans, whether they're black beans, whether they're white beans, whatever kind of beans, you know, I like to add a little bit of white beans to this. Um, white is kind of our favorite or garbanzo beans. And the other thing that I like to do in the weekend is cook up a bowl of grains. I cook up a big pot. This was like two cups of grains. This is, this is barley. Um, sometimes it's quinoa. Sometimes it's rice. Black rice is really excellent. And this is barley and barley is going to be nice between the beans and the barley, that's my croutons. <laughs> and that's my, that's my healthy, give me a little bit of satiating uh, starchy fiber to this. And this, do you know barley is so fantastic in lowering cholesterol? It's just like sponges cholesterol right out of you. You know, goes through your body, sponges up cholesterol, and then you poop it out. And it's like, bye-bye cholesterol. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, uh, it works good between the beans, and the barley, that makes a great little thing. The other thing is that I do love to have a little feta cheese and some people would go vegan and not have any cheese to this, but um, I love to add a little bit of feta cheese to this. It adds amazing flavor, I think. Another thing I might add is a little envelope of salmon. Uh, love me these envelopes of salmon. Talk about convenience, this is convenience. So this will add great, amazing flavor to a salad too. So it's either feta cheese or the salmon uh, that I would do, but between the beans and the barley and this and a dressing, do whatever you'd like to do for a dressing, but I'm gonna tell you what I do. And what I do is I will use um, a really good high grade, um, I'll add maybe dice in some avocado for the fat or use some olive oil, one or the other. But I will tell you this Fustini's is a particular brand. It's an 18 year uh, balsamic vinegar and it is 
so amazing. And just that straight on this makes the most best dressing ever. So that ladies and gentlemen, I would add some nuts to this. Mm, forgot those and nuts are in that cupboard right over there. Add some nuts to this. And that is the easy button salad. Ta-da! Easy button salad is our life. Making salad for dinner, making salad uh, for lunch. My husband's trained, I'm trained, whoever comes in to make lunch makes two salads. That's what you do. And um, big salads, lots of salads. I don't know what I do without it. When we're out of lettuce greens, when we're out of salad stuff, it's like a crisis in our house. We have got to get groceries. Yeah, it's a big deal. So my, that's number one, veggie tray. Number two, easy button salad. What's number three? What's number three? Number three has to do with this. This. Is it cookies? <laughs> no, I'm a nutritionist. It's not going to be cookies. Is it? What is it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to my slides and let me show you what is the secret behind this sheet pan. And number three, here we go. Drum roll, please. Ooh, looky. It's more vegetables. Is she really gonna say it's more vegetables? It's roasting veggies. I used to roast vegetables twice a year. Ha! Now I roast veggies on an almost daily basis. Actually, I roast enough for three days because my oven will do three trays. I can do three trays and then we have leftovers to put on our salads, to put on things, um, be able to warm them up and add them. So let me just show you, it makes veggies non-diet-like. It changes it. It makes them delicious, wonderful, and not diet-like in any way, shape or form. So if you're thinking that the veggie tray and the salads was just a little too diet-like, this is totally not. It's the basis for so many delicious meals. And it's just so easy. It's 400 degrees on your oven. Use the convection bake if you have convection bake. And it's just 20, it's just so easy, so easy to, to put together delicious meals. And you just use a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, 400 degrees, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. It's easy, 400 degrees, 15 minutes, give it a toss, give it another five, 10, all depending on the vegetable and how big you made it, how much air is in between. If you have a lot of air in between, it'll cook a little faster. If you have convection bake, convection roast on your oven, use it. It will caramelize and make your veggies amazing. So I had a convection oven for the longest time. Didn't realize I did. It's also the air fryer, really. If you have convection bake, you don't need to buy an air fryer because you have a big giant air fryer. It makes the wind, it's a little fan in the back. It works really great. So roasting veggies and then also Buddha bowl heaven. Um, Buddha bowls. Are you making Buddha bowls every week? I hope you're making Buddha bowls every week. Let me just tell you. Roasted veggie bowl with secret sauce, great stuff. Look at how beautiful that is. Not only one cruciferous vegetable, but two. Do you see them? The broccoli, the red cabbage. This has got quinoa in it. It has sweet potatoes. If there was a disease in your body, it would be eradicated at this moment. And so what I'd like to do is go ahead and show you how to make this really quickly. Um, roasting vegetables, like I said, has been life-changing for me. And then these are sweet potatoes that I... You know, I didn't peel them because I never peel them. That's just one less step that I'm going to do. And you have more nutrition that's immediately underneath the skin of the sweet potato. So just scrub it well. And then this, we're throwing in our garbanzo beans already rinsed and drained, throwing those in as well. They're going to roast with the vegetables. Mm, that is going to make them amazing, roasting with the vegetables. I am using two tablespoons of oil and that oil is going to help our body absorb the beta carotene and all the different carotenoids that are there in the vegetables. So oil is actually a good thing. And the recipe doesn't call for mushrooms, but you got it. I'm adding them anyway, because I add mushrooms to pretty much everything. Uh, that's the idea. And I left them big this size because I've got sweet potatoes in there and I want them to uh, hold up to it. You could cut them smaller if you wanted to. I'm using parchment paper and I have a pretty good size cookie sheet here, this baking sheet. So I've got a little bit of air. If I, if I wanted to offload this to two cookie sheets, I would have gotten them maybe a little bit of a more of a char on them. And uh, so the added air is helpful, but this is actually pretty good. Um, you can do that if you've got a pretty large uh, cookie sheet. I'm gonna do 15 minutes first round on this, and then I'll go back and add more time to it after I toss it. Let's talk about that quinoa. 
quinoa, love it. It's a high protein grain. You want to rinse it with your fingers like this with a wire mess to remove the saponin, the saponin that's on it, which is a bitter uh, flavor. Unless it says that it's already been pre-rinsed, then you don't have to do that step, but you got to have a wire mesh to be able to do it with. So very important. So then there's just a cup of water and a half a cup of quinoa. I didn't add any salt, didn't add anything else to it. Just going to let that cook 15 minutes is all it takes. I put a lid on that. Tahini. Y'all know about this amazing ingredient, don't you? It's just ground up uh, sesame seeds loaded with magnesium, loaded with so many great nutrients that help fight depression, so many things. And so that goes in a great flavor enhancer. And then this is a white wine vinegar. So we're using a tablespoon of this. Don't worry, you're going to get the recipe. So you don't have to write down these amounts or anything. Uh, we'll get the recipe right to you. Dijon mustard is going in this. We got vinegar, we have Dijon mustard. And two teaspoons of that. And then we're putting in two teaspoons of honey. Yes. A little bit of honey going in there. Nice local honey. If you've got some good local honey, it's great to be able to use. Um, and so in two teaspoons, honey, and then this is shiracha. Shiracha. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Um, two teaspoons of that. So I made it a heaping teaspoon. I'm proud of myself. I've gone through two of those by now and then add some water. Uh, add some water to it. You can add a little more water if you'd like to it to make it even um, more thin, make it more drizzly with a little more water, make it more drizzly. But this is the secret sauce, ladies and gentlemen. The aroma coming up off of this is spectacular. Secret sauce, amazing stuff. That's all I'm going to say. It's just, uh, yeah. And so next up we have our, we're going to give this a toss and then put her back in the oven. And yes, I use parchment paper because it, it makes cleanup so much easier. Remember I'm roasting all the time and um, you get a better char. Maybe, like I said, if you separated that off onto two, uh, two sheets, so there was more airspace, but uh, I'm just gonna let my convection oven uh, put the rest of the char on that, which it does. And this is how you know that your quinoa is done when you see those little tails come out. The tails have released themselves and that is ready to go. So, ta-da, we have our roasted veggies, the broccoli's looking nice and done, um, our sweet potatoes tender, and so I'm going to call that good to go. Time to assemble us some Buddha bowls. Grain goes on the bottom, and then next up goes some of our wonderful roasted vegetables. And what's neat about this Buddha bowl is that it's a combination of the roasted vegetables and raw, and to be able to add some of our chopped red cabbage that I always have on hand and some shredded carrots that I always have on hand and raisins add a nice sweetness bite to this. It's just yummy. And of course nuts, and this makes six servings. So I'm just doing a one sixth here. And then if I would add a little bit more water to this, it would have been more drizzly, but it's good this way too. So that's that secret sauce, ladies and gentlemen. And then to add an avocado to this, which is like, just brings it over the top to add an avocado, it's optional. If you didn't wanna add the avocado, you wouldn't have to. But remember to remove the pit, do it safely against the cutting board, and then to do a little slicing like this, and you can checkerboard it, you can leave them, and, and then just use a spoon. I was using the same spoon as my quinoa spoon. <laughs> and there we go. Add some of that. That, ladies and gentlemen, bootable heaven, life-changing. It's bootalicious. And it helps you get your nine to 13 servings of cancer fighting, diabetes fighting, and it's crazy good. Even Scott said so, crazy good. So um, I hope I've given you a few ideas, but I'm not done yet. I know I should be almost done with that, but I'm running a little behind. I mentioned the cookie sheet, didn't I? I mentioned the cookie sheet. So let me just share with you, do I ever make cookies? Of course I make cookies. Not only do I make healthy, delicious cookies that my family can enjoy, we have them for breakfast. <laughs> breakfast cookies. So I wanna share with you my chunky monkey breakfast cookies. Um, let me show you how you, we're not gonna show you how to make these. We don't have time, but I'm just gonna show you a picture of them. Let's go to our PowerPoint slide. And, um, and I'll just show you that these mix up so easily in a bowl and they have real ingredients. And let me just tell you, they are amazing. Look at these chunky monkey breakfast cookies. It'll take you like 20 minutes to put these together, put them on a cookie sheet and bake them up. And they're so nutritious. You can eat them for breakfast. They do not have the butter, stick of butter and all the sugar. They're sweetened with banana. 
and a little bit of maple syrup and a few chocolate chips. They're fantastic. That's all I'm going to say. You'll get the recipe for the Chunky Monkey Breakfast Cookies. You're welcome. <laughs> so my daily rituals, do they really make a difference? We got the 24 seven veggie tray. We got the easy button salad, roasting veggies. And will any of these make changes really make a difference? I'll tell you. Yes, they will. And I wanted to share with you that I got an email from someone, uh, her name is Esther, and she said, I have been on a medical leave from work because of a bum hip for over a year. Before I can have my hip replaced, I have to lose 20 pounds. Over the last year, I have slowly and surely been making progress, but I hadn't reached that goal yet. I watched her get your healthy on live stream and I kicked it into high gear. I eat veggies now like it's my job. In the last four weeks, I have lost eight pounds. And that means I have officially hit that milestone of losing 20 pounds. Now I can schedule that surgery and get on the road to recovery and getting my life back. Yay, Esther. Let's give Esther a big round of applause. Woo, Esther, getting your life back. And I'll tell you, eating veggies like it's your job, <laughs> but making them delicious. I mean, they should be delicious. And once you start eating more, it's amazing how you miss a salad. You miss, you're like, oh my goodness, I got to have a Buddha bowl. Uh, got to have, uh, got to have my veggies. But I would be remiss if that's all I talked about today. Let's go back to our slides. I want to share another thing. And I want to ask you this before we go to questions. I want to ask you this. How much do you exercise? Oh, I thought you said extra fries. <laughs> no, no, no exercise. How much do you exercise? Some of you had a hard time with that. Is this you? I named my dog five miles so I can tell people I walk five miles every day. Is that you? <laughs> I hope that's not you. Or maybe that's you. That's kind of cute. Or is this you? It better not be. Oh my goodness. It's Ohio license plates. So I think you're safe. Um, but seriously, I want to just remind you that exercise is magical. And I want to share with you that my friend, uh, Marsha, she lives in Illinois and she talks at 8 AM every morning with her friend in Florida. And guess how they talk walking. They both have their headset and they, um, you know, and their, their phones and they're walking and they meet at 8 AM every morning walking and, uh, they get to connect, they get to talk, they set goals. And it's a great, like, life-changing thing. Another person I know gets on her treadmill and watches movies. She can't watch a movie unless she's on her treadmill. And so she really looks forward to it or watching TV or something like that. So going back to the slide, remember, there's so much good about exercise. And here's the thing, find your fitness love. Have you found your fitness love? If you haven't found your fitness love, keep looking, keep trying so that exercise becomes your get to, not your have to should never be your have to. It's your get to. So I really want you to look forward to it. And um, I guess I want you to remember your options indoors. I mean, isn't this just awesome? I mean, you guys have the community, baby. You have it going on. So you have options from indoors to outdoors. I checked you out. You got lots of parks and recs and beautiful things to go to. So check it out. Make that goal. I have a friend named Debbie who she set a goal this year to do 52 hikes in this year. So that's one a week, 52 hikes. And uh, she's going someplace different. Sometimes it's the same park, but a different trail, but she is making it happen. And that is really cool. So my daily rituals, I have a bonus because exercise is near and dear to my heart. And I exercise 30 minutes, most days of the week, it's usually an hour, most days of the week. But I also know that some days I don't exercise, but every day I do exercise because I'm going to share with you my final bonus and then we'll do question and answer. And that is my final bonus is my morning moving and grooming. Let me do this. My morning moving and grooming. I do this every morning. I get my makeup on, do my hair, and I do crank out these three exercises. I do alternating shoulder presses or shoulder raises and arm pullbacks and a few squats. So if you're really going to get your healthy on, I want you to join me and I'm going to show you exactly what I do, exactly what I do. All right. Now, if you have a shoulder injury, then I want you to take it easy if you've got knees, but I'll tell you squats are really healthy for knees. So I'm going to show you how to do it 
I, I want you to be healthy. Don't do anything that wouldn't hurt you. But if you know you can do those three exercises safely, I want you to stand up with me. I know, safety of your own home. Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. And look, look, Shannon. I think Lydia's gonna join us too. I love it, okay. Um, go ahead. Oh yeah, Lydia and Shannon are here. So we're gonna stand up. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you these things I do. And remember our alternating raises. So I want you to raise your left arm in the air, mirror me, okay? Put your left arm in the air, this one down. And I want you to take your right hip, your right heel, lift up your right heel and put your elbow down here. So your hip and that heel are up. All right. And then you're going to change it out. And this one comes up. So the other one comes up and then this one, you got that. Oh, you look good. Check you out. I want every single one of you up. Don't be sitting and looking at us. That is no fun at all. You can't get your healthy on sitting down on your butt. Stand up because it feels so good. It feels so good. You're gonna be so happy you did this. I do this every morning in my makeup room. And this is part of my, I am gonna have a great day. I am waking up my spine. This is one of the exercises my physical therapist says for me to do to help relieve my back pain and it works. So I make sure I do this every day. And the next one is the arm pullbacks. Again, I want you to make your stomach nice and firm, your core. I want you to have your feet centerpiece apart, when lift apart, I'm going to head back, kind of like cheerleading. I remember cheerleading. I remember it. It was only 40 some years ago. <laughs> and this opens up the thoracic region. This helps, do you know what helps fight migraine headaches? I know so much good stuff. I will tell you totally works. And then for the final metabolism booster, do you want to boost your metabolism and burn more calories? Here we go. I want you to very careful squat down. If it's only a little ways, it's only a little ways. If you can go a little farther down, great. Come down to what's comfortable. Come up and squeeze your buttocks together. Yep. Down and squeeze. That's two. Down and squeeze. That's three. You know what they say? Squeeze. If you don't squeeze them, Nobody else will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're on seven and eight. Come on. We're going to a hundred now. Come on now. <laughs> there's nine and there's 10 and oh, let's see a bonus one, 11 squeeze at the top. Good job. All right, I want you to take a nice deep breath into the nose and exhale. Deep breath in through the nose and exhale. And I just want to show two more slides and then I'm going to turn it right back. You guys stay on camera there with me. And uh, let's just, uh, because we're almost done here. And I just want to share to keep your healthy on, ladies and gentlemen, keep your healthy on. Check out You Got Meal to all these great activities coming up. Make sure you sign up for that, that 25th annual Hospital Hill Run on June 11th. Start training for it. You can run it, you can walk it. Um, a great thing to look forward to and do start training for so many great ways. And I also big shout out to your nutritional services team with Sodexo. Look at this. You've got some awesome support. So if we touched on anything, how food is magical and how food can actually change your life. You want to turn around type two diabetes. You want to turn around uh, your cholesterol, your blood. You want to get your inflammation markers down. You want to reduce your risk of disease. I will tell you, get into their core four program and check it out, do individual appointments. I will tell you, uh, these experts will get you on your way. This is the start, the tip of the iceberg. This will get you going. I am now ready for questions. We have one minute for questions. <laughs> no, if we go a little over, I think that would be okay. So tell me ladies, I haven't been watching the questions, but I'll let you, which one of you wants to sort through and tell me what you got. Absolutely. I will start with a couple questions here that we received. Um, let's see. Denise says Gatorade Zero doesn't have sugar, um, but is it really still healthy to drink? Okay, dairy, um, meaning milk. It has zero added sugar, like milk. Is that what the question was? Um, it just said Gatorade Zero doesn't have sugar. Is it still healthy to drink? Is that like a brand dairy zero? Hmm. Gatorade. Gatorade. Oh, Gatorade zero. Oh, Gatorade zero. Okay. Thank you. Um, Gatorade zero, but is it healthy to drink? 
excellent question. Two things that I will say about that. One, there are some acceptable sugar replacers. Obviously they're using a sugar replacer. And the ones to avoid are a sulfame K, which I think is what's in there. ACE, E, a sulfame K or potassium, a sulfame potassium. You wanna avoid that. And I'm telling you from the Center for Science and Public Interest. And if you want, I can give you the link that you can add to your education page, or I can put it in my slides. We can post my slides. But um, so you wanna avoid food colorings and you want to avoid uh, sucralose, which is probably also in there. Sucralose and a sulfame K is probably the two. Um, but if it is sweetened with stevia or erythritol, those two are acceptable erythritol, erythritol, erythritol is acceptable and um, stevia is acceptable. So there you go. I'm not sure, I haven't checked out Gatorade Zero, but I think it's the, uh, uh, because you want to avoid Splenda, which is sucralose, and you want to avoid NutraSweet, um, which is NutraSweet. <laughs> aspartame, aspartame, there we go. Right, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So Perfect. I hope that helps. And food coloring. So therefore, I drink, I drink healthy Gatorade. We make our own homemade Gatorade, and it's called water with this much juice on top, and it's a little bit of juice on top, and it's very diluted um, because Gatorade they do dilute. It's not as strong as soda pop, but what we do is we just take juice and it's diluted water. That's what we do for our home. Next up. Awesome. Um, the next question is from Colleen. She says. How do you handle the social pre social pressure to eat cake, et cetera, sweets at parties and social gatherings? Great question. Mm -hmm. I would love to encourage all of you to try a week without any and saying no. And you'll find out the more you exercise that no muscle, the easier it gets. A couple of things that I do is sometimes I say yes to the cake. Sometimes I say, I mean, I'm not saying you have to say no forever. Did you know the American Heart Association, we can, us ladies, we can safely have six teaspoons of added sugar a day, six teaspoons of added sugar a day. It's not zero. Um, but I also say no 90% of the time. And I say yes, 10% of the time. And so I have exercised my no thank you muscle a lot. And I do say no thank you when I'm not that hungry, when I haven't really exercised that day. Um, but if I've exercised that day and if I'm like, you know what, that cake looks really good. And, and I just, I just feel like having some cake. It's called half it and you can have it half it. And you can have it. I, I take a half a slice and I don't ask them to get me a small slice. I go and I get a half a slice. I sit down and I enjoy half slice because remember it's really the first bite, the second bite and the last bite that you taste. All the others are just kind of crammed in the first bite, second bite, third bite. You really just need three bites of cake. Mm -hmm. It's the dose that makes the poison. Mm -hmm. A small amount is no big deal. And don't feel guilty about it. Enjoy it. So I don't think you have to say no all the time, but I will tell you it's freeing to say no most of the time. And I would have some berries. I mean, I make sure there's always fruit uh, option for dessert, like there's dessert and there's fruit. If I have to bring the fruit, I'll bring the fruit to make sure there's a fruit option because fruit is dessert. Um, it's a glorious, glorious, wonderful nature made dessert. And I don't feel deprived ever. And no one needs to go, Oh, you're not having any cake. Oh, but look at what I'm having. And you know, a lot of people go, Oh, where'd you get that fruit at? That fruit looks great. I'd rather have that than that cake. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers the question to say no. When you want to say no, say yes. When you want to say yes, but half it and you can have it. Next. Awesome. I love it. <laughs> Um, next question. We got a couple of questions about, um, mushrooms, um, on your, from your mushroom section. Um, how about canned mushrooms and frozen mushrooms? Um, are those just as healthy? Yep. With the exception of salt added to the canned mushrooms, um, and they're, but they're cooked. And so there's some salt there. You're probably going to add some salt to the dish. You could just cut back on sodium from somewhere else, probably more sodium in the canned tomatoes. So you could buy no salt added canned tomatoes um, or something like that if that dish had that. But um, no, I think absolutely canned mushrooms work. They're convenient. I have some in my cupboard too. I have kind of gotten spoiled with fresh. I don't know why, I just kind of like them more, but canned is absolutely, I think, stellar fine. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. And then frozen. Is there frozen? I, I guess I'm not familiar with frozen mushrooms, but yeah, sure. <laughs> and there's freeze dried too. You can buy freeze dried mushrooms. Those are great too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up. Cool. Um, we had a question from Julie Z. She says, how long does secret sauce last in the fridge? <laughs> not very long because it's so delicious. You'll eat it. <laughs> All right. I believe it will last four days for sure, because that's how long I have managed to have it stay in my refrigerator. And so I know it lasts four days. And um, so good point. You might want to make a double batch so that you can enjoy it for lots of different things. Secret sauce is pretty amazing. And maybe it lasts even longer. It's got that vinegar in it. And it's really tahini. When you look at the ingredients, it's mustard. None of those things really go bad. So it might even last longer than that. Hmm. So I don't know the exact answer, but there you go. I don't know if it freezes well. It might freeze well. I'm not sure I haven't tried it. Next question. Next question is from Kay Letty. Do you eat any animal protein, beef, pork, chicken? I heard you mentioned salmon. Yes, I actually am one of those people that I have a lot of respect for people who are vegan and who only use plants, 100% plants, because you get so many antioxidants in your diet. You, um, there's so many more antioxidants in plant foods than are in animal foods. But animal foods do provide other amazing things. They do, we can get the protein we need from plants. You don't have to have animal foods to get protein, mm -hmm. but there is some, I believe that we can have small amounts of animal foods. And so I absolutely do have red meat, very lean red meat. I'm married to a deer hunter. So we have venison in our house. Yep, that's him. Oh, hell yeah, <laughs> deer hunter. Happy guy over there. And I'm very appreciative of the very good uh, lean meat that we get from that. So we have venison maybe, maybe as much as once a week. Um, but we have a lot of vegetarian meals that Buddha bowl dinner is a vegetarian meal. So we don't have meat every single night of our life. And I don't have cheese every single day of my life either. Um, but we do, I do use that feta cheese, um, salmon. We have salmon probably twice a week. Um, uh, either this or, um, a fresh cooked salmon or this. So we have salmon twice a week. And um, chicken is certainly lovely and nice to have occasionally. But I will tell you, when you can learn to do meats in moderation so that vegetables aren't elbowed out so that you're having more vegetables, it's amazing. Let vegetables be the main star. That's, I think, the, 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 the magic sauce. In fact, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, just has been promoting a vegan diet, but he's only 80% vegan. And you know, he goes, I'm not 100%, but I'm 80% vegan. And he's the one that said that his doctor says his cholesterol's lowered so much that uh, he thinks he might be a different person. <laughs> so um, I don't think you have to be 100% vegan. I'm not, and I think there's value. I think clean, appropriately sourced animal foods and even pork, I love pork tenderloin. Um, pork tenderloin is the only pork I eat, but I think, and no processed meats, zero zip zada processed meats. That's where I draw the line. I'm vegan when it comes to processed meats <laughs> because they're linked to colon cancer. They're linked to esophageal cancer and so many things. Um, even if it's turkey, uh, a processed turkey meat, I don't buy it. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will go into our last question. Um, I guess I don't know if it's really a question. There's kind of a little conversation um, going on about hard boiled eggs. So um, do you add hard boiled eggs to your salads? Ooh, absolutely. Uh, my husband is trained to cook the hard boiled eggs and he knows how to make them perfect. And uh, to have some hard boiled eggs cooked in, in the fridge is a great weekend prep step so that you have those for the week. I think I highly suggest it. I think personally, eggs are really nutritious. You've got a lot of benefits and some downsides to eggs, but the benefits I think outweigh the negatives. I know a lot of people who really study it are like, no, all 100% plants would be better, but I really do believe that eggs give you something. So um, we do know that cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern really anymore. We can use, we can have some cholesterol in our diet. And as long as we don't overdo it, uh, same with tuna, a lot of keto dieters out there eating lots of tuna for, you know, a whole can of tuna and that adds up in mercury. Um, as long as we're not eating too many eggs, I think that um, one uh, egg four days a week is perfectly ac acceptable. 
but I want you to make sure you have your oatmeal for breakfast too. Uh, so oatmeal is a great way to get flaxseed and berries. And so don't miss out on that. So yes, I am a hard boiled egg fan. Very good. Yes. Thank you guys, everyone for all of your questions. Um, yes, thank you. The interaction has been fantastic. Thank you for staying a few minutes over. I apologize for going over, but it's just a little added bonus fun. And I wanna <laughs> say thank you, a broccoli bunch. And um, let's see, do we, they get to win prizes now? Yes, yes, we, um, yeah, go ahead, Shannon. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I mean, thank you again to Zanya and Scott. He's your little helper back there. Um, you guys, I don't know about anybody else on here. I'd love to see in the chat quickly just your one takeaway or something that you're planning maybe tonight or this weekend to really start to implement. Um, I know personally, since I've been working with Zanya the last couple of weeks, I've started, there's been a lot of talk here in the office and Lydia and Andy can attest to this about mushrooms um roasting vegetables uh we actually we had a little bite to eat earlier we were still talking about it so um i know yeah sam seen the 24 7 veggie tray um so thank you for all the great information thank you for your energy um just thank you for such a fun evening we had a blast prairie lakes healthcare system yay you thank you for throwing a fun party for your community uh, and caring so much about your ladies to be dedicated to a ladies night out. Did we love it ladies? Yay. I think we did. Uh, I think we did. It was great. Thank it you so great. much. And I do love my headband and it's perfect for makeup and we're holding your hair back when you're doing your doing makeup and washing your face at night and in for exercise. I do love it. And um, I love these. Thank you so much, you guys. So make sure you check out the education page and oh yeah. Okay, and okay, so how are they gonna win? Yes, we have some winners. Um, again, thank you guys for interacting. We appreciate it. We kind of went through the chat um, and picked out some winners who also registered. Um, so first we have the camp chair. So the winners, we will all announce just your first name and, and where you're from, but we will formally send you an email so that um, you know that you won and you can all come to Prairie Lakes and pick them up. We'll have more details um, when we send you um, that email. So first we've got a cookbook. Our first cookbook winner is um, Mary for Brashwalt gets a cookbook. Yay, Mary! Our There's second... like 40 Marys on the line going, is it me, is it me, is it me? <laughs> Hopefully there's only a couple from, um, from Russell. Okay, um, our second cookbook is Barbara from Watertown. Yay, Barbara! Woo -hoo -hoo! And Barbara. our third cookbook is Carol from Watertown. Yay, Carol! Woo <laughs> okay, next we have Jennifer from Castlewood. One, a camp chair. Ooh, those nice. are great camp chairs, by the way. Your, yes, for all of your outdoor activities. Um, next up is this adorable blanket. It's super, super fuzzy and soft. Um, this buffalo plaid blanket. And that is Pam from Clark, South Dakota. Awesome. Congratulations, Pam. Yes. Hey, and Pam. we picked um, two people that were um, following along with us on Facebook Live um, and interacted us uh, with us there. Um, we have a massage gift card for Chelsea from Watertown. And awesome, um, the second one is Christina from Watertown. So we will Yay. reach out to all of you um, ladies with more details on that. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> Who won? So Yay. exciting. So, so exciting. Well, again, I mean, thank you to Zanya. Thank you to Scott. Thank you for all of our providers that, that uh, helped us to build out that education page. As Zanya just mentioned, please make sure that you're checking that out. The information will be there for up to a year. We also will be linking this recording. So if you want to go back and, and get some reminders and different things like that, that is available to you. Um, we, of course, 
couldn't do it without all of your support and people viewing and, and people registering early and all that kind of good stuff. And on behalf of Prairie Lakes, we're happy to be able to put together an event like this for you. Yes. Yeah. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, Ladies Night 2023 is still in the planning stages. Um, so keep your ears open for that. Um, we'll be also sending out a survey for you guys to fill out um, so we can get your feedback and you guys can help us um, with some ideas, things that you guys want to hear and know about um, for next year. Um, and we will take a look at all of those suggestions and take those into consideration. So we appreciate your feedback. And there might be a prize associated with um, filling out the survey. We love um, prizes. At least giving them away. Prize. Yes, we do. We do. Um, so thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, and that concludes tonight's event. Um, have a great weekend, everyone. Yay. Thank you so much, Yay. you guys. You guys rock. Woohoo! Go and get your healthy on. Get your healthy on. Go, 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 go. go. <laughs> Let's all put our hands in. Put your hands in. Put your hands in. Here go. we go. Here we go. We go. One, two, three. Go. go. Get healthy. 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 Good night, everybody. Thanks Good for everybody. watching. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Bye.